and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be creating some eye lasers like you can see on the screen now. It's a very simple effect to achieve and I'll go through how to create this step by step. So I'm just going to start off by creating a new project. There we go. And I'm going to want to make sure I add a face tracker. And we're going to also add a face mesh. So this face mesh here will be basically acting as our kind of, I don't want to say occluder, but our kind of surface for our material to reflect off to a degree. So this face mesh here, I'm just going to create a new material. I'm going to call this new material retouch. And I'm going to change its shader type to be retouching. I'm just going to reduce its uh, skin smoothing to somewhere between 10 and 20. doesn't really matter too much what the value is, you can play about that in your own time. I'm just going to keep mine at around 11% for now though. The next thing we want to, want to do is we're going to want to add some uh, capsules. So there's two ways about doing this, you could either, if you're familiar with things like Blender or the 3D modeling programs, you could create some of yourself. We're going to uh, sort of cheat a little bit today to show you a way if you're not necessarily used to 3D modeling tools that you can sort of do this effect. And we're just going to go to the AR library. We're going to go to its home page. So let me just get out of this, see if I can return home. There we go. So under AR library, we have AR uh, 3D primitives. And I'm going to select my capsule primitive and import this into my project. There we go, like that. And this capsule will be what will be our beams, essentially. So I'm going to drag my capsule onto my face tracker. And I'm going to want to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. So to speed things up, I'm just going to manually type in 90 on the Y. And I'm going to use the scale tool I'm just going to pause my video so I can see what I'm doing, and I'm just going to scale this beam uh, until it's sort of a fairly decent length. And again, the longer we stretch this, the thinner our beam will become at the points, so bear that in mind. And I'm kind of going for this tapering where it sort of is thin at the bottom and gets fatter once it's a lens, and once it hits a lens, it'll be occluded. And I'm just going to duplicate this capsule, and I'm going to rename one of these capsules to be laser R and the other one we're going to call laser L to represent our left and right channels or our eyes. So I'm going to, um, we could manually position these using the patch editor but uh, I find that because we're using 3D primitives that we haven't created ourselves the pivot point by default on the 3D model is in the middle um, which can also make our life a little bit tricky if we try to then work out offset values, etc. So what we're going to actually do is we're just going to create a null object. I'm just going to call this null object right. I'm going to drag my right laser onto that. So now my right laser is parented to my right null object. And I'm just going to do it one more time and call the second null left and parent our left laser to it. So why do, what we're doing here is by using these null objects we can now move our position of our objects so we can move our lasers while still using the uh, null object as our controller or source and you'll see why we're doing that in a second. So I'm now going to go to my patch editor. I'm going to drag my face tracker into my patch editor I'm going to remove the face tracker slash face follower patch that's added by default. And I'm going to drag from my face select into the gray. I'm just going to add an eyelid patch. And we're going to use this to capture the positions of our eye data to reset our position of our 3D lasers. So just to show you why we're using the null objects, not the lasers themselves. If I was to, for example, select the left laser and select the transformation position and link that to the left center position on my eyelid patch, 
you'll notice it's actually going into the middle because of the way that the uh, pivot point is on that object. However, if I was to uh, just delete that and put my left null object in and link that to my left uh, position, uh, yes, it's still now clipping into it, but I can still move my left laser and move it away from the eye, so it's not now intersecting with the head. Uh, whereas, as you see, I can't move my null object anymore, but I can still move anything that's parented to it. So by using null objects as our controllers, we can essentially create new pivot points without having to use a 3D modeling program. And I'm just going to do the same. So I'm going to select the right null object, select the transformations and position, and I'm going to link this to my right center position. And I'm also going to make sure that this laser is positioned uh, accordingly. Now I tend to go with something around the lines of 0 0.34, that seems to be right. Again, you can uh, play about these values until you think it looks right to yourself. But from my experience, it seems to be around the 0 0.34, 0 0.35 level seems to be accurate uh, for what we're achieving. So now we've done that, we can select the laser and you'll notice we've got this capsule mat. So we could also create a new material for these lasers. I'm just going to use the actual capsule mat that comes with this model. I'm going to change its shader type to be flat. I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to choose kind of red color. And, and I can also reduce its opacity to make them a bit more see-through. So we've got this kind of cartoony comic book style lasers coming from the eyes. That if I was to press play, should be tracking and moving around like you can see on screen now. So now we've got these lasers, uh, we need to kind of make the eyes look like they're actually emitting them. So the way we can do this is we can select our null object. We can right click on it and add a plane. So this plane will automatically be parented and following our eye because of the fact that it's parented to this null object. And I'm going to select this plane, create a new material, and call this new material eye emission point. So this is the texture that will be where the laser starts uh, from. And this is where I would now need to go online or create a kind of lens flare. So I'll just look for this lot of weird lens flare on a black background. Uh, you can create one yourself, obviously this doesn't, doesn't take a lot to do. You can just go into Photoshop uh, or any photo editing program of choice and create one. I'm again doing this fairly for speed, so I'm just going to take this one I found on the internet. I'm now going to drag that into my project. So I should have this red uh, lens flare on a black background. So if I select my eye emission point material, Choose my texture as my lens flare now, and I choose the blend mode to be add. And I just scale this up so you can see. We should now start to see this sort of very uh, small uh, laser kind of texture now being shown. Again, we could make this more obvious, so we could uh, adjust the scale, or we could adjust the material itself to make it more apparent. Uh, I'm just going to pause this because. It's very hard to work with files whilst they're moving. So if I scale this up, it would make the lens flare a bit more spaced out. And because I've created this one plane the way I want it to be, I could just duplicate it, drag this duplicate onto the other null object, and now we should have these two kind of lens flares emitting on our surface. If you start to see that they start to overlap or disappear like they are at the moment, we can just simply select that material, go to advanced render options, and disable our depth test so they don't now clip anymore. And that will also make the lens flares a lot more uh, obvious or apparent to us. Uh, a step that you could do to go further is we could also add an emitter. So I could right click on one of my null objects and add a particle system. This particle system I can um, obviously it just as I want to see through it. I'm just going to change its uh, space to be local so it emits from itself uh, and I can rotate its y axis sorry 
its x axis to be 90 degrees. So it emits in front of itself, so it's emitting from the eye point. I'm just going to reduce the square angle so it doesn't have this movement that's going up to it anymore. So it just keeps perfectly straight. You can also increase its lifespan, so I can increase this to like two seconds, let's say. So it'll stay on screen for longer. Uh, also adjust its scale just so it's a little bit bigger. And now I could apply a new, either a new material or my uh, lens flare material, for example. So this is a way we can kind of create this like moving beam. So when the actual lasers pass in front of the camera, you'll start to see this kind of flaring effect. So if I actually turn on my webcam for a second, and bear in mind I've only put this particle system on one eye, we could duplicate it onto the other. As you see, we've got this kind of glow going on. If I was to stare directly and get a laser in the, in the camera, you should see this kind of like lens flare effect going on. And like I said, this is a super simple effect. It does not take a lot to really achieve. Uh, obviously, you can spend a lot more time on it. We could create uh, systems where the lasers change color over time by uh, plugging the material into one time and having a color change value patch system set up, which again, there's plenty of tutorials on, online to follow on that. Or we could have it so the lasers only fire when our eyes are open, um, or basically by toggling their um, visibility or emission or opacity well not opacity but kind of if you know makes sense so again there's many ways we can do this but this is just basically i just wanted to sort of highlight how to do a laser effect just because it's pretty easy to achieve doesn't take a lot of uh, effort but again can be applied in quite a few contexts especially if you want to create this kind of cyborgish look so let me just um turn this one off here so I could have half my face as a robot with a bit of a, either a face mesh texture or a 3D model uh, over here and then have this a laser beam zoom, zoom out. So yeah, and again, this color of this beam could be anything and I could just change the color of the material or capsule down here uh, and that would then change the effect. However, I'd want to make sure that my lens flare is the same color as my beam, otherwise, as you can see, it does look a little bit off. Anyway, I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and hopefully I'll be able to have my um, laptop back once it's been repaired soon and we'll be able to keep the regular scheduled content being produced essentially. So I've been Steve Fisher, thank you for watching and goodbye.